I've done a lot of experiments using extreme hot and cold temperatures, fire, and dry ice. Now I want to see how these things react with something we all need every day, food. Thank you. You're welcome. So Darren Dyke thinks I'm just taking him to lunch. But what I have stashed in the kitchen will put him to work with his slow motion camera right away. I confess that I brought you here uh, with an ulterior motive. Well, what's uh, that? Are you familiar with molecular gastronomy at all? I'm actually not. A lot of chefs are using science to kind of manipulate ingredients and create new food experiences using chemicals and equipment and all kinds of techniques. That sounds tasty. Well, in that spirit, I'll be right back. I have a plan to feed some folks some really cold food and see their reaction. For that, I need liquid nitrogen. The temperature of liquid nitrogen is minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, really, really cold. And it has many practical applications. Cryotherapy, preserving medical samples, and destroying the T-1000 in Terminator 2, Judgment Day. But my favorite use of liquid nitrogen is in the culinary industry. Hello, friends. How are you all? I have a little oh. bit of a gift in the kitchen for you. <laughs> and when I say gift, that's because I can't charge them for it, and I don't work here. So I have some liquid nitrogen here. Have you all ever uh, had liquid nitrogen before? No, mm -hmm. never. This is very wow. cool. OK, and, and I mean cool. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a cryogenic liquid. It's very, very cold. It's actually boiling. Its boiling point is around minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. So boiling doesn't mean hot. It just means highest temperature. I'm wearing eyewear and handling it with gloves because minus 321 degrees is no joke. As soon as this liquid comes to room temperature, it evaporates. So I'm soaking this till all that liquid is hitting all those little tiny pockets of air inside of the cheese puff. Now, do you think it would be safe to eat a piece of food that looks like this? Ladies first. <laughs> it's essential that all the liquid has evaporated before food prepared with liquid nitrogen is served. Otherwise, exposure to the liquid can result in frostbite, and if swallowed, can cause severe internal damage and even death. I do not recommend trying this at home. <laughs> oh my goodness. You look intimidating. I'm not going to try to make you mad. All right, now chew it. You, you want to chew. The, don't hold it in your mouth. It's really cold. So the faster you chew, the warmer it'll get. There you go. And then breathe, breathe, breathe. And you look angry. You look like a dragon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Now you're spitting things everywhere. This is getting traumatizing. There you go. There you go. That would be really cool. Awesome. Sweet. Cheese puffs are the perfect food to dip into liquid nitrogen because they're so porous. As soon as the cheese puffs are taken out of the liquid nitrogen and are exposed to the warm air, the liquid nitrogen rapidly boils off the snack, resulting in an insulating layer of gas around the cheese puff. <laughs> that insulating vapor is one reason why liquid nitrogen is used in the freezing and packaging of foods to preserve them longer. Very good, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And again, uh, don't tell the chef that I was here. <laughs> get out of here before I get sued. Tastes good, yeah. yeah. Egg-laying animals have evolved to not break the eggs that they sit on. Right. So the eggs evolve that way, too. Mm -hmm. So it's the arch that really kind of does it. The arch of an egg is similar to an architectural dome. With no corners or angles, a dome supports the weight of the roof evenly so it doesn't give way to stress. The egg is shaped the same way, distributing weight evenly and minimizing stress. I can squeeze it this hard, and I'm not faking it, and it's not gonna break. So do you guys think that if we had a couple of dozen eggs, do you think Annalise could stand on them without any of them breaking? A couple <laughs> might break. You're like, I don't maybe, I saw maybe. how hard you were doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Annalisa, you want to try it? Yeah. All right. I'm down. Let's do this. So Annalisa's going to step on them and, and maybe, maybe not break any of them. Fingers crossed. OK, I'm going right. to use you as a little, little bit of a balance here. All right. Made it on. Made it on. OK. All right. All right. So why does this work? The shape of the egg's arch, when aligned vertically, is capable of supporting around five and a half pounds before cracking. So a completely even weight distribution over two dozen eggs should hold around 132 pounds, well over Annalise's weight. The key is the even distribution of the weight. We made it through part one. Part two is also tough. Okay. Darren. And, oh, yes. Bring them up Good here stuff. to inspect. Hey. Hey, so here are your eggs back. <laughs> I think those flip-flops are clean, so you can serve all those if you want to. <laughs> the incredible egg, the incredible arch. 
So it's with a healthy respect for the mighty egg that I take on this next challenge. I'm familiar with the phrase, it's hot enough to cook an egg out here on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Garbage. Don't do that. That's filthy <laughs> and gross. But uh, we can use solar energy to do a lot of really interesting things. So Nick, uh, come on over here. So Nick's going to help us just to get our feet hot. <laughs> so to speak. Before I do anything, I think everybody should get their uh, sunglasses on. Okay. This, this might be a little bright. All right. Normally, you'd light a match using friction. Striking a match against a striking surface generates heat to ignite a flammable compound in the match head. Here, engineer Nick Householder uses a lens to harness the power of the sun. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! And get the temperature up around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly the ignition temperature of a match. All from a little piece of plastic. Nick uses the same technique to ignite dry leaves within seconds without a match. Wow. It's almost winter. Get out of here. That is insane. The FLIR thermal camera shows heat exceeding 400 degrees. So now that we've seen that we're capable of using solar energy to light some stuff on fire, should we try and cook something? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to need a bigger lens. I'm on it. All right. Oh. Oh. Nick is using a Fresnel lens a lens commonly used in lighthouses. It concentrates light into a super powerful beam, a beam so powerful it can guide boats 20 miles from shore. But can it harness enough heat to cook a meal? Here we go, everybody. This is how we're gonna cook our food. So we have our Fresnel lens here. We got this out of an old rear projection TV. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Crazy. All right, Nick, you ready? Yep. All right, let's go crack some eggs. That light is literally so bright that as far stopped down as I can go with my super high-end slow motion camera, like, it's still peaking. It's still getting way, way too bright in the center to be able to even see details. You guys are all right with scrambled, right? Sure. Oh, wow, they're actually cooking. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so how does it get so hot so fast? Lenses work by bending or refracting light beams. The Fresnel lens has concentric rings like the rings on a tree. These rings are actually thick ridges on the surface of the lens. Each ridge bends the light slightly more than the one beneath it, so the light rays focus in one beam. That's crazy. <laughs> Fresnel would be proud of you. I've never even heard of a Fresnel lens before this, so to see what it can do is actually really crazy to see. Well, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think it's about ready. It smells like breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now for my favorite part of breakfast. I call it Kevin's bacon. Fresnel lenses are crazy, man. Like, they, they focus so much energy into one spot. You just get immense amount of heat. Like, you can literally, like, blow up rocks or, like, bottles and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But on the flip side of that, there's cooking. Bacon's out. All right, who's hungry? Me. Ah. To tell you the truth, I thought that they were going to be kind of runny and the bacon wasn't going to be done well, but that is some nice bacon. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널, Discovery.